Friends, I have another really cute style from Renee of Paris from their Muse collection. This is Panache Waves in the color Dusty Rose. Oh my goodness, you guys. Well, she's super cute, but she's a super bad face flopper. And I want to take heat to this one so badly, but I gotta film my review so that you can see her the way she came to me. And then I'm gonna do a Tip Tuesday because this one is just too darling not to mess with. If you want to know more about Panache Waves or this color, Dusty Rose, you know what to do. My name is Denise. I'm also known as Hey Wig Sister on Instagram and Facebook. And I received this wig from Renee of Paris. They sent me all of their Muse collection wigs so that I could share them with all of you. I actually reached out to them and asked them for this one and a few of the other Waves collection or Waves wigs with the name Waves at the end, W-A-V-E-Z, because, well, you know I'm a sucker for Waves and curls and I just thought these looked really interesting and they were so awesome to send them to me. So I'll be reviewing them over the course of, the, I don't know how long it'll take me, over the course of the next little while. And I got them, most of them, in one of the fun fashion colors. Now something to know about the Muse collection. It is a fashion wig line and they mainly come in fashion colors. I think each of the Waves wigs, each of the Muse collection wigs, come in a brunette and a blonde as well. The rest of the colors are fashion colors. So I know some of you aren't gonna wear the pinks and the blues and all of that. So there is a wig in this collection in a color that hopefully would work for you. But for those of us who maybe wanna every now and then have fun with our wigs, they've got us with this collection. All right, let's take a look at this one from all sides. All right, I wasn't kidding when I said I want to take heat to this one so badly. Now, it really, this one is a significant face flopper, as you can see over here, and we've got kind of a wayward curl over here. Now, let's talk about that. This wig has a lace front and a mono part. Those are hand-tied features, and all of the pieces that I'm struggling with are on the hand-tied features, so it is very, very possible or even likely that if you got a piece from this collection or this wig, you wouldn't have the same issue. Some of it has to do with the person who tied them in, you know, what direction they set those knots. One thing you can do is you can hang on to that lace there and you can just sort of coax that hair. What I'm trying to do right now without being too rough on the lace is I'm trying to redirect those knots because each of these fibers are hand tied onto that lace in individual strands with an individual knot and those knots can get a little stubborn. But if that isn't enough, it may take a little while, it may take a few times, then I can use heat on this because it is a heat friendly piece and what I would do and what I will do is take a hot comb and just get that hot comb right in there at the root. I don't want to run it all the way through because I don't want to ruin the wave, but I do want to get this to stand up a little bit more. Likewise, over here, I want to get that back a little bit more as well, and I will do the same with that. I'll film it so that you can see it, but I have done this in other videos. I'll grab a few of those links and put them below so that you can just go check it out. Knowing how to make these wigs your own, work with them, is really critical to your success on this journey. If you don't know how to do these things and you would get a wig like this and you wouldn't be able to wear it or maybe you would even send it back and it could be a really cute piece that you end up loving with just a few tweaks. Now let's take a look at that lace front that I was telling you all about right there. So you can pull this up off your face. If you are like me and you love to kind of take wave, wavy pieces and sort of claw clip the front up so that the waves can all spill down in a cascade with a lace front, you can absolutely do that. We also have a mono part. It's a left part, left going over to the right. Let's take a look inside this cap. I am, think they did a really good job on this piece. Aside from some of those floppers, it's a really cute style. There's that lace. It's not an extended lace, so you've got just a little bit of real estate there, but I think that's fine for this style. We've got ear tabs with soft material and bendable stays. 
no extended nape, and we've got bra strap or pull adjusters. The rest is open wefted. Now, this is fitting me big, so I'm going to cinch these in so that I can not feel like it's going to fall right off my head as I'm playing around with the hair. Renee of Paris is known for running kind of average-ish, maybe average petite, not, not quite average petite, but I would say depending on the style, it can be average to a little bit smaller than average. I think these are running really true to average. And what I've noticed is like fashion lines of wigs tend to run a little bit bigger. And the reason for that is because the intent is that people with bio hair might wear them. So when a wig is considered a medical wig, they often run a little bit smaller, assuming that the wearer has no bio hair. But with a fashion wig like this, you've got a little bit of extra room. I got quite a bit of extra room up here because that way you can fit bio hair underneath it. Does that make sense? You know, I think anybody can wear any wig. You don't have to have medical hair loss to wear a medical wig, but there are there is some advantage to having a wig cap be a little bit bigger if the primary audience is going to have bio hair versus have it run a little smaller if the primary audience is not going to have bio hair. Hope that helps. That's sort of my two cents on the topic. I've never actually asked anybody, but that makes sense to me. And for my bang wearers, you can absolutely cut a bang in this one. So let's just pretend I'm going to cut a bang so I'm getting all the hair forward. You can definitely cut a bang in this one. And honestly, if you get a face flopper like I have a face flopper, putting a bang in there is really going to help. And then you're not going to have to mess around as much with hot tools to get it to lay out of your face. Other than that, and you can see it's kind of a challenge. I think this is so darling. I'm actually a little disappointed that it's such a face flopper because I don't think it shows as well as it could if it wasn't constantly falling in my face. I do think this is a beautiful, beautiful style. The wave pattern is gorgeous. It does not have permities, but it does have a moderate, I would say a moderate to kind of moderate heavy density. It's not super high density, but it is, uh, has quite a bit of hair. I think that's also contributing to how much trouble I'm having with this front. In addition, I would say these fibers are a thicker fiber. Some wigs have really fine denier fibers, sort of like those of us with fine hair. Some wigs have a thicker, more substantial fiber, like people with thicker hairs. You, you know, everybody hairs, thicker hair. Everybody has different hair. Some people have a lot of really fine hair. Some people have very little really fine hair. Some people have just thicker hair strands that makes their hair look a lot fuller and thicker than it is. I would say this wig is more like that, thicker hair strands. Overall, I like this wig a lot. I think a lot of women are really gonna love it. If you can find a color that's gonna work for you, I think this would be a super fun wig to play with. You can style it. I might even take my thinning razor and trim a few little face framing layers into this one. I'll have to think about that because I don't wanna lose the waves and definitely the waves are more toward the end, kind of middle down. But if you are someone who likes to make wigs your own, I think this one has a ton of potential. So. Just keep that in mind. It's my two cents. Not every wig is for every woman. In addition, with my 30% off coupon code, you can get this piece for under $115. For under $115. So for a fun fashion wig, but made with high quality Renee of Paris fibers, I think that's a great deal. All right, let's talk about this color, Dusty Rose. This is kind of a... Um, almost like a coppery pink. It's got this pinkish, reddish, copper hue to it. It's really interesting and fun, and it's definitely dynamic. There's uh, some lighter pieces, like more of a lighter pink versus some more coppery pieces, and then it's all on a dark root. Now for me, this dark root is perfect because of my bio hair, therefore I can wear this and blend my bio hair if I want to. I wouldn't consider this a pastel color. In my viewfinder, this is looking a lot more vibrant than it really is in person. So we're going to get outside so that you can see this color outside. Know that color does change indoors, outdoors, warm light, cool light. Color will look different depending on the light you're in. So it's not that this light is wrong, it's just that 
I think it's gonna look just slightly more muted than it's probably looking right now because I have so much light on me. You wouldn't have this much light on you in real life. So beautiful. I think they did a fabulous job. I'm really excited to show this to you. Let me know if you have questions and if you have this wig, would love to hear what you think. And was yours a face flapper? Share it below. Talk to you soon. Dusty Rose, I just took her out of the box. I haven't done anything with the part, but wanted to get outside. So this is really face flopping, but I haven't worked with it yet. So I don't know how serious that really is. Beautiful, kind of a, well, dusty pink. <laughs> they call it dusty rose, but it's a really muted color. I'm sure that you can see the top here. All right, there you go. Hey friends, thanks so much for watching. Here are a few videos I think you might enjoy. Go ahead and click on one and watch.